2015 was an odd year for Pixar. Granted, the 2010s as a whole was an odd decade for the studio, but 2015 in particular kind of frustrates me more than all the others. Because after three not-so-universally praised movies, Pixar finally brought audiences back with Inside Out, a movie that had all the elements we want to see in a Pixar movie. A creative concept, fun characters, strong humor, a progressive arc, emotional moments that land, it truly was a great film, and many thought Pixar was back to being really good again. And then they released a huge piece of garbage several months later. No! 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 The Good Dinosaur, the studio's first box office failure. Pixar released two movies in the exact same year, both of which were completely different from a quality and quantity level. One was massively successful and considered one of Pixar's best films that prompted audiences to believe they were back, and the other was the complete opposite that made audiences believe Pixar's consistency was declining. Again. As usual, I'm going to give you my thoughts on both of these movies, as well as the history behind how they became the way they are. Here's Inside Out vs. The Good Dinosaur, a difference in quality. <laughs> Let's start with Inside Out. I really love Inside Out. I mean, duh, it's in my top 10, my Pixar ranking, so yeah. The basic setup is that everyone's mind is fueled by emotions, and the emotions themselves are personalized. This movie is centered around a group of five emotions working behind the mind of an 11-year-old girl named Riley. They're in charge of whatever emotion she might be feeling in a different sort of scenario, as well as helping her through the different phases of life. This concept was inspired by director Pete Docter, who conceived this idea back in 2009 when he started observing changes in his own daughter's personality as she continued to grow older. The development process of this movie took roughly five and a half years, with significant changes in the story and characters delaying the film's production schedule. It was initially planned to be released on May 30th, 2024, but was postponed to June 19th, 2015. Its production was slow, but it eventually came out on time of its new release date and became an instant classic. People loved this movie. I love this movie. Just like with Pixar's other works, it takes a premise that sounds weird on paper and does almost everything great that you can do with it. Now yes, the idea of emotions having their own personalities has been done before in weirder, wackier cartoon movies before, but this movie takes that premise and tweaks it just enough so that it's just as fun as you expect it to be, but also very emotional and having themes that everybody can understand. At its core, this is a coming-of-age story, talking about change, adapting to new situations, and how for better or worse, we have to make sacrifices in life we'd probably never expect to make. And all the hardships of growing up are shown, not told, through these characters who are trying to develop and help Riley through these tough times. Whether you're a kid or an adult, either going through these moments or have gone through these moments in the past, everyone is able to sympathize and relate to this. You understand the problems, the frustrations, and how hard it is to make a change, even if said change is absolutely necessary. At the same time though, the movie is able to balance these heavy subjects out with the same fun, humor, and excitement you'd expect in a Pixar movie. And that's another thing that's at the center of this movie keeping balance. Joy and sadness are two opposites who don't get along that well. Joy is the one who is usually in charge and tries to keep sadness out of the way from making Riley sad because she doesn't see any real purpose in her other than making Riley sad. But the movie slowly shows how much the two are actually tied together through that single memory of Riley feeling let down after something went wrong with her game. And then there's the actual ending, where Sadness helps Riley admit to her parents how much she misses her old home, before feeling that emotion of happiness. So many of us try to run away from Sadness and think it's not good to feel this way, but the movie shows that sometimes it's a necessary way to cope with stress or frustration you might be feeling inside. 
It's all summed up through beautiful visuals and amazing music that perfectly ends the movie on a high note. I don't love everything about this movie. Like, I think the actual adventure is played out a little too long. There's some weird plot holes that are just straight up abandoned. And sometimes the pacing falters in the middle. But otherwise, this movie is great. It's something that tells you that all your emotions are healthy. You just need to know how to keep them in check. I should know because I have to make sure to keep my emotions in check many times. The movie tells you that it's okay to feel whatever you feel. It's all part of growing up. One way or another, you're going to go through hardships and you're just going to have to accept it. This is the perfect movie and studio to talk about these difficult topics. On top of that, it's funny, it's got great animation, fun characters, strong emotion. It's simply a great film. And I don't know about you, but I can't wait for its sequel. I'm not expecting something on the exact same level as this movie, but I am hoping they can do something a little similar. Anyway, let's talk about the movie now. I don't know what the heck happened to Pixar because they showed promise. Audiences were won back over. But several months later, we got the good dinosaur. And if you've watched my Pixar ranking, you'll know that this is my least favorite Pixar movie and one of my least favorite animated movies in general. I already know I'm gonna get some backlash because apparently this movie has its fans, which is fine. I'm totally okay if others like something I don't, but I respectfully do not agree. This piece of trash underwent a much more troubled production. It was supposed to come out in summer 2014, like Inside Out, but along the way, the film was completely reimagined, resulting in changing the movie's original director, Bob Peterson, to a new director, Peter Sohn, as well as a whole new story team. This resulted in this, as well as Finding Dory, both getting delayed a year, which also resulted in Disney's share price falling. And because of the new changes in production, the movie we got turned out to be complete garbage. At least for me. Right off the bat, the story lacks a lot of focus. It's missing that usual Pixar spark. At its core, it's about a young dinosaur named Arlo who's trying to conquer his fear in order to find his way home. Despite the fact that Pixar marketed the movie as, what if dinosaurs never went extinct? That's not what this movie is about. Instead, it takes place in this weird parallel universe where humans and dinosaurs coexist. The dinosaurs talk like humans, and the humans act like dogs. How innovative. There is no reason for this movie to be about dinosaurs. There's a bunch of farming and ranching and creepy death cults that are all human concepts that don't translate well at all in a movie about dinosaurs. It's just a western story, yeehaw! With dinosaurs copy and pasted in. Dinosaurs are out living in the range, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the idea of them surviving the asteroid. Another thing that I found to be a bit unbalanced is the animation. But for the most part, this is literally the only thing I like about this movie. The graphics on the environments and set pieces look breathtaking. Every single panning shot of the backgrounds is like nothing you've ever seen from Pixar up to that point. Every scene you could put up on your wall if you wanted to. But then it cuts to the actual character designs and you're just like, good lord, what just happened? This weird combination of photorealistic backgrounds with overly cartoonish looking dinosaurs never looked right to me. I'm not gonna act like the CGI in Dinosaur wasn't great, but at least that movie was able to match its character designs with its realistic environments. Here, it's just... Huh? <gasps> Another thing that grinds my gears about this movie is that its plot is extremely familiar. What little story this movie has feels directly copy and pasted off other better animated movies. Arlo's dad dying and returning as a ghost is just Mufasa from Lion King again. And the whole plot of Arlo trying to get from one place to another is just the same plot you've already seen in other, frankly better made dinosaur movies. In fact, now that I think about it, the plot of this movie feels very similar to Finding Nemo. The main characters in both movies get lost, have to find their way back home, and along the way they come across these other obscure side characters, who either get in the way of the character's journey, or are supportive to them in some way. That actually makes me hate this movie a lot more. If Pixar actually did copy a story that already worked 12 years ago, then I'm seriously gonna flip the heck out. 
There is nothing original in this story. It's boring and predictable at every turn with no surprises whatsoever. It tries to hit hard with several emotional moments, but I'm sorry, they all fell flat for me. Nothing made me feel anything. Every single character is either unmemorable or straight up annoying, especially the main character. I hate Arlo. He goes through the most cliche arc ever, he's never funny or charming, and in every scene, you always, always have to hear him scream. I seriously can't even finish this movie, that, that, that's how much I hate it. The Good Dinosaur is the worst piece of trash Pixar has ever produced. No disrespect to the director or the artists that put in their effort, but this is the movie that I easily consider to be the worst for the longest time. Even back in 2015, it's nothing but a dinosaur getting back to a certain place for 93 minutes. It's so boring. There's nothing emotional to latch onto. There's no interesting characters. There's no interesting story. There is nothing in it to enjoy except the animation. It is also better than Dinosaur, but that's pretty much the only compliment I can give it. All the cool things that could have been explored about Dinosaur surviving the asteroid were thrown in the garbage for no good reason. If there's anyone who actually does like this movie, that is totally fine. But for me, this was the dullest and infuriating experience of all the movies Pixar has made. Absolutely the worst one of them all, and nothing tops it. Not even Cars 2. <sighs> that was a lot to take in. So there you have it. Two completely different original movies released in the exact same year, both suffered troubled production, resulting in their initial releases being delayed. However, the key difference is that the former didn't go through a big change like the latter, and it actually turned out good and 10 times better than the other. <laughs> but in all seriousness, my opinions on these movies aren't factual, they're not black and white, and you don't have to agree with anything I just talked about. Feel free to hate the movie I love, or like the movie I hate. In the end, the biggest highlight of 2015 is my little sister's birth. Oh!